We are now five days out from this year's elections. So Democrats and Republicans are making their closing arguments to the country about what the country should do next. Because in the 2006 elections, Democrats picked up 31 seats in the House and six seats in the Senate. In the 2008 elections, Democrats again picked up 21 seats in the House and eight seats in the Senate. So what happens next, electorally speaking, seems pretty clear. The pendulum is expected to swing back at least some of the way. Republicans widely expected to reclaim many of the seats that they lost in the last two elections, which were both Democratic landslides. So now for these elections, the two parties are making their case for how the country should run from here on out, with a Democratic president still in office, but with likely more Republicans in Congress than are there now. Now, there is nothing that divides Democrats and Republicans more sharply right now than their view of what happens next in American politics. There's nothing also that shows the Democrats' denial about what Republicans are planning for the next chapter of American politics than each party's view of what happens next. I think that we have to work as a country. I don't think we can work as political parties. I think we have to work together. Legislation is the art of compromise. This is not a time for compromise, and I can tell you, Sean, that we will not compromise on our principles, and we will not compromise on the will of the American people. Ta-da! Democratic Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid first there, explaining on this show last night that compromise is the name of the game going forward, that compromise should define American politics after this year's elections. That's the view from the Democrats. Compromise is how you get stuff done. And as you heard there from Republican House Minority Leader John Boehner. This is not a time for compromise. This is not a time for compromise. This is what's happening now between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. We are five days out from the elections. And Republicans are saying exactly what they're going to do if America votes for them. Exactly what they're going to do if and when they take control of Congress. Republicans are saying exactly what they're going to do and Democrats do not believe it. I hope that... My friends on the other side of the aisle are going to change their minds going forward because putting the American people back to work, boosting our small businesses, rebuilding the economic security of the middle class, these are big national challenges and we've all got a stake in solving them. We've all got a stake in solving those problems. I expect Republicans to join us in solving those problems. Right, Republicans? There will be no compromise on ending this era of runaway spending, deficits of debt, no compromise on repealing Obamacare lock, stock and barrel. There will be no compromise on defending the, the broad mainstream values of the American people in the way that we spend the people's money at home and abroad. On spending and taxes and values, uh, there will be no compromise. There will be no compromise. That's what Republicans are saying over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It is not, however, what Democrats are hearing. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell calls next week's election the first step in retaking the government. Over the next two years, he says, quote, the single most important thing we want to achieve is for President Obama to be a one-term president. I think there will be an effort to work together. I've spoken to Mitch McConnell before we left, and I think there will be an effort to work more closely together. No! No, 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 really, that is not what Mitch McConnell is saying at all. I promise. Here's what Vice President Joe Biden told Bloomberg's Al Hunt last week. Mr. Biden said, quote, I think we're open to speaking to the Republicans. Compromise is always possible. You hear that? Compromise is always possible. Look, there, there will be no compromise uh, on stopping runaway spending, deficits and debt. There will be no compromise on repealing Obamacare. There will be no compromise on stopping Democrats from growing government and raising taxes. And uh, if I haven't been clear enough yet, let me say again, no compromise. It is one thing for Democrats and Republicans to disagree on whether or not they're ought to be compromise in politics, whether or not there ought to be bipartisanship, whether or not the parties ought to work together toward common national goals. That, that, that would be one thing. But what is going on here is that Democrats believe that Republicans are going to do something that Republicans say emphatically they are not going to do. This is not that Democrats think Republicans ought to compromise. It's that Democrats, for some reason, think that Republicans will. If I haven't been clear enough yet, let me say again, 
no compromise. Right. Why do Democrats think that Republicans do not mean this when they say it? My expectation is, is that uh, Republicans, uh, should they win additional seats, uh, should they be in a position to hopefully take more responsibility working with us, uh, are going to say to themselves that it's important for us to, to show some accomplishments uh, over the next couple of years. The administration and Democrats this year keep insisting that after these elections are over, Republicans will come to Washington with an eye toward taking responsibility for governing, doing what's best for the country. Republicans themselves are insisting that is not the case. They say they are coming to Washington with one mission and one mission only, to destroy the presidency of Barack Obama. To make it sure that it fa to make sure that it fails, so that Barack Obama only serves one term in office. That is their goal. When Democrats look at Republicans who are poised to pick up more seats in Washington, they see potential partners in governing. What Republicans themselves say they are doing is coming to Washington to destroy the Democratic presidency. Period. Full stop. What Republicans themselves say they are doing is coming to Washington to prevent any compromises with Democrats. Period. Full stop. Democrats think we are all on this nice morning commute to work together. Republicans are here for a demolition derby. What is it about Republican plans for Washington this year that Democrats do not understand? And perhaps more importantly, if Democrats did understand it, if they did believe Republicans when Republicans say what they're coming to Washington to do, if Democrats did get it, how would they be running against the Republicans differently right now, five days out from these elections? Joining us now is David Weigel. He's an MSNBC contributor and a Slate political reporter. David, it's good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, why do Democrats believe that Republicans um, will work with them and compromise on legislation, even as Republicans say they definitely will not do that? Yeah, I'd like to think they're not that naive. I mean, there, there's a moment in politics when a party says something it doesn't really mean. I like to call that moment all the time. <laughs> but the, the, I, I sometimes feel that Democrats speak in sound bites that sound good at an uh, NPR or something, and Republicans speak in sound bites that will sound good at a Tea Party or at a town hall. Because what Re Republicans are doing is reacting. They're being led by their base. I was, you know, driving around Wisconsin uh, earlier this week covering those campaigns, and Rush Limbaugh was, was saying, it, these guys on TV who are saying Republicans should compromise, it's a trick to get you to stop voting. What he was doing is egging on people to demand that Republicans, anytime they're asked about this, are completely, you know, once more into the breach, completely unforgiving on anything. And this is where you hear Mike Pence talking. I mean, remember, my favorite you know, analogy of the election is that it was the Tea Party movement that came up with a Republican contract before Republicans did. You know, they're just letting the Tea Party lead them. Democrats are being led by, I'm not quite sure, maybe you can answer that. <laughs> well, do, do you foresee... Democrats trying to use these no compromise pledges against conservatives who are elected this year. Do you foresee Democrats being able to back conservative candidates into uncomfortable votes that splits them from this base and from the talk radio world that is demanding uh, they be pure as the ideologically driven snow? Oh, that's their hope, and that their hope is that this worked in the past and that the current class of Republicans have a sort of alternate version of history in mind. They think that in 1995, they basically either won the government shutdown or they could have won it if they'd been more resilient. And that this time, if they shut down the government over anything, over, over, Medi over Medicare, over the Obamacare, Whatever the, whatever the case, they're going to win it. The country will be on their side. You know, it's actually I like paying attention to the guys who are already going to, who are definitely going to win. Like Mike Lee, who's uh, running for Senate in Utah. I apologize, the Democrat there, but he, this Republican's likely to win. He was promising that he wants to see a vote on a balanced budget this year, which would mean a 40 percent budget cut, and thinks Republicans could win a fight on that. You know, that Democrats are convinced they could win a fight like that, but I mean, I, I think. They're already thinking too strategically when their problem this election and next election will be the economy is really lousy. And if the party's uncompromising, if the party's in opposition so uncompromising, doesn't want to spend any stimulative money, wants to cut, wants to cut taxes in a way that your economists don't think will work, I, don't, I can say you can beat them politically. I don't see how that's going to be good for the country, the economy. Well, the way I see it, Dave, the way I, the way I mm -hmm. see it, particularly going to Alaska and going to Nevada, trying to look at these races up close like we've done recently, is right. that the conservative movement is always trying to purify the Republican Party. It's their constant project to push the party ideologically further to the right. And when the Republican Party is strong, it can sort of more or less ignore the conservative movement. But when the Republican Party is weak, the movement takes over. So we've got a movement takeover now of the GOP. 
And because it is the movement calling the shots, not the Republican Party, there's really no practical plan for how to govern. There's sound bites for, for, for opposition type candidates and for campaigning and for rallying, but there isn't really a practical plan for how to govern. Does that, I mean, you're much closer to the conservative movement in your reporting than I am. Does that seem like what's going on to you? Mm, a, a little bit, and that, that's a worry that some people I, I have if the Republicans win, as, they, as the movement really expects to win. Um, you played a bit of John Boehner's interview on Shan, Sean Hannity. What Boehner said at another point in the interview is that he wants to have an up or down vote on restoring Medicare funding, on increasing Medicare funding, because the Republican strategists like Boehner, I think, like the, like the guys who are responsible for the strategy that, you know, because the economy is bad, let them win the House, uh, realize that there's some big government programs that are really popular and they're not going to win by attacking them. Um, they're not quite sure yet. They're very excited about this new crop of conservatives. They're not quite sure how to adapt. And I think the hope, like, let's be honest, the blunt hope is that in the Senate, as Mitch McConnell said, it doesn't matter if you have five new Jim DeMints or five new Olympia Snows. Adding every person you add to Mitch McCon McConnell's caucus means a, fil a vote for a filibuster. They're going to, we're going to have high-minded debates about this, but they're going to stop whatever they want. And if all they care about is stopping things, they can do that. I mean, the way our system has evolved, uh, a party can stop whatever it wants without an explanation, without an alternative plan. You know, look at the last couple of years. The House yeah. has basically pl passed an ideal Democratic agenda, but it's been gum gummed up in the Senate, and liberals are going to be punished for it. Uh, you know, same thing here. I mean, re Republicans don't really need to do a lot. If they're serious about waiting out this election, they're serious about, I think, you know, the national focus turning to what their, their presidential candidates are promising, then they can really gum up the works and get away with it. I mean, the only thing that matters here is whether the economy recovers or whether they... Um, basically aid the, aid the country in, in remaining in a, in a rut or going into a double dip. If that's the case, they win. And it's cynical, but that's politics right now. The incentives are, uh, are to trash the country for political gain, and the capacity is there to trash the country for political gain. Um, Dave Weigel, MSNBC contributor, Slate political reporter. It's nice to see you again, Dave. Thanks for being here.